You are listening to Nicholas Acosta with Downtown Expert Realty in Orlando, Florida. Host of the podcast, Home to All, an all-inclusive real estate podcast. Nick sits down with guests to talk about how real estate works. You can check out his podcast at www.downtown.expert or 407-508-8809. Facebook and Instagram at downtown.expert. Enjoy the episode. Uh, good morning, Tuesday morning here. This is Nicholas Acosta. This is home to all an all-inclusive real estate podcast coming to you from beautiful downtown Orlando, Florida, across from Lake Yola Park. Uh, this show is for anyone and everyone to talk about real estate and how it works. I'm Nicholas Acosta, a licensed real estate broker with Downtown Expert Realty, LLC. Um, I sit down with guests to help them get exposure as well as talk about what they do and how real estate is part of what they do. You can contact me always at 407-508-8809. Or at downtown.expert on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, as always, today's segment is brought to you by Blanchard Insurance. Uh, today's guest, we've got Mike, and we also have Haley and Antonio joining us from the west coast of Florida over there in Port Charlotte. Good morning to everybody. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing great. How about you, we're, Mike? Yeah, we're doing uh, great over here in Orlando. Awesome. As you guys can see that I'm right in front of the, the 408, but no, it's all good. It's just a green screen, so it's all good. <laughs> Trying to bring humor for early morning on Tuesday. It's all good. <laughs> um, so, awesome, guys. So, with that, I wonder, so, Mike, do you want to introduce us to Haley and Antonio and let them know what that what role they play with Blanchard Insurance? And Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Haley has actually uh, been with us uh, for a, a good while now, uh, but she has kind of stepped into the role of a sales agent uh, recently. Uh, so we congratulate her on that. And Antonio has uh, recently joined our team as well. And uh, they're kind of working in tandem as a team right now over on the west coast of Florida, uh, just south of uh, St. Petersburg and Tampa. And uh, they've been kind of just being rock stars over there. So Haley, uh, I'm going to just kind of hand it off to her uh, right now so she can kind of tell you about her background uh, with you know Blanchard since she's been with us for a while. And then we'll uh, hear from Antonio as well. Absolutely. Thank you for having us on the podcast today, Nick. Um, so I originally started when I was an intern. Uh, I was going to UCF at the time and I was just scanning in papers at Blanchard um, using the CRM software, onboarding clients. And then I gradually got into the client services department um, in Blanchard. So I was able to work with clients directly when it came with claims or any situations that they had taking payments. And I've actually been able to roll all of that experience from the CRM, the technical nitty gritty stuff to um, the customer service into sales now. Um, so I actually get to design insurance policies for everybody's assets. So whether that's cars, homes, jewelry, just to make sure that you are protected. So. Yeah, uh, she actually got an education. We were, uh, years ago, we had, uh, as a lot of, uh, you know, in real estate or whether, you know, in insurance industry, when uh, both industries started to go paperless, you know, back, uh, you know, in the digital boom. I mean, we had paper files going back, you know, 25 years or so. So uh, at that point in time, when actually Haley came on board, we had a uh, project, we were <laughs> taking all those paper files and then uh, scanning them into, you know, our CRM. We had been digital for years, but we were just kind of, it was a task that we were kind of being lazy about. So of course, you know, we had this, you know, rows of, uh, you know, those huge four drawer filing cabinets that weigh, you know, 500 pounds, you know, once you put the files in them, kind of looks like a mausoleum, you know, and you kind of treat it like a mausoleum, you know, you walk by it every single day and you're kind of like dreading it, it's foreboding. So Haley came on and uh, was taking all, you know, those files and scanning them in and creating, you know, uh, you know, you know, new files and, you know, in our CRM and whatnot. So I think, you know, uh, not to say trial by fire, I kind of, uh, you know, you know, but it's, it's kind of, it kind of is true. She was kind of thrown into it and she got an education, 
just by standing there and, you know, reading some of these files and kind of hearing us and then, you know, in the nut house that is insurance going on in the background. Uh, so it's kind of like naturally she almost like came into her own by, you know, by doing that, which is, you know, which is awesome. I mean, I mean, if, if anybody getting into any industry, I'm like, you know, go in and just listen to the background noise for, you know, a couple of years. And then that's the best way to get an education. Definitely. No, I agree. So, yeah, now let me introduce Antonio here. Antonio, uh, who actually is uh, Haley's better half, uh, came on board and they wanted to uh, develop a team team over there on the West Coast. And Antonio comes from a background where I'll let you tell, I'll let him actually tell you in his own words a little bit more about that. But he's actually a general contractor as well. His family has been in the custom home building business for, uh, you know, for as long as, you know, he's going to tell you about uh, over on the West Coast. So I'm going to let him uh, jump in and kind of tell you a little bit more about his background. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Mike. Um, I just, yeah, I just got started with Blanchard as a life health agent and then uh, working with Haley on the PNC side as well. Um, just really excited to develop the West Coast area. And like Mike said, I have my GC license. A uh, little bit of background, I went to UCF, graduated with a finance degree. Thought I was going to do financial advising and then really got interested in the construction project management world. So did a little bit of production homes in Orlando and moved back to the West Coast did uh, some custom home building. And I see already some parallels between insurance and the uh, general contracting just with the business to business relationships and the communication skills needed for uh, general contracting. So it's been a nice transition and it's nice to get back to the advisory role. I like that about financial advice a lot. So in insurance, I think it's really important to have an agent that's got your back and, you know, is going to get you set up correctly and give you the correct advice. So that's a, uh, I'm just yeah, really excited to do the business development and uh, hit that niche of insurance. Yeah, and I mean to touch on a couple of things that uh, you know both Antonio and Haley have said. Uh, you know, number one, uh, UCF. We've always had uh, cl very close ties with UCF. I did my first two years there. Uh, you know, they've both gone to UCF. I would say a good majority of. Our staff are, I have gone to UCF, are currently enrolled, or are UCF alumni. We actually, uh, when we started expanding our business back around 2006, uh, you know, we were very involved in the intern, you know, uh, internship process over there. I think it's called their ex differential or whatever I can't even pronounce it uh, you know program so we had very close ties to them uh, both my parents uh, you know were you know worked at UCF my mom was head of construction out there for you know a good number of years my dad was actually a got his doctorate's degree there and was a professor in the College of the Education so we do have those close ties uh, hence you know our former logo which was you know the Knights head for you know you know a long time so you know that and then uh, one of the other things that and Antonio did mention was, you know, drawing on the parallels from other industries. Uh, most of the team members we have working for us are not career long or, you know, they haven't been in the insurance industry, uh, you know, for 30, 40 years. Uh, we've drawn, and I've always said this, you know, uh, the best experience is to bring experience sometimes that's from outside of the organization in that's a direct parallel and can help you out. For example, Antonio having this, you know, expansive knowledge on construction and, you know, what it, what goes into actually rebuilding a house, whether it's from, you know, demolition or debris removal, built, bringing things up to code. I mean, coming in from a claims perspective, as you know, Nick, that Great. is, you know, invaluable information you can't get anywhere else. I mean, you know, as far as being able to advise and ensure that, yeah, it's, you know, we, you know, it's going to cost this much money or what, what it goes into rebuilding a house and tearing it down after a fire or, you know, you know, a flood claim. Uh, and then, you know, uh, we have people who work with us who have been former realtors, you know, realtors for 30 years and cross over to the insurance. We've had people who've worked on the mortgage wholesale side as well. People from the 
title uh, background industry. So we like to actually uh, recruit people to come work for a company who have not just a background insurance, but something that's, you know, been in relation or tandem. And I really think it's benefited, you know, not only our team and organization, but, you know, our clients as well to have, to have you know, something else that, uh, you, you know, helps, you know, helps during the entire process. Oh, I, I completely agree. And uh, as Mike mentioned, and I mentioned to you guys in pre-show that I was a claims adjuster for an insurance company for 20 years. And uh, it's even though it was personal injury, uh, but the way that insurance thinks and the way they analyze things has definitely helped me in my real estate career to prepare me because we run into a lot of things when there's inspections or why things cost what they, or why they have to have coverage on this and the risk and all that stuff. And it helps me significantly and substantially in the real estate business. So I completely agree with that. Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I just to add on to what you're saying, I mean, uh, from a claims perspective, especially on the personal injury side, the conflict resolution and problem solving that you guys have to know is, is, phenomenal, especially for a company, the company you work for with Progressive, which is, you know, as you, you, you know, they pretty much have hands down the best claims practice and claims handling like in the industry. So I definitely can see how that, you know, would it help out in real estate as well. Well, like for instance, just to give you an example, like I was telling you, I haven't, I've got the official uh, paperwork yet, but we're working on closely getting to a resolution here to get my seller's house in Kissimmee under contract. And remember I told you, we started with the 10,000 gap and now we're down to 2000. And I remember that when it came <laughs> yeah. to, to our auto claims or personal injury claims, where we could get an agreement with the attorneys or whether it be with the providers or. Settlements and so oh, that, yeah, I don't know what happened. That's sorry about that. Uh, and still, in they instilled in me very, very deeply into my brain that. And I think when I had this conversation with my sellers today, and I had the, the buyer's agent for their property that they're buying down in Port Charlotte, where Antonio and Haley are, um, which is awesome that you guys are down at the same day that I, I have this resolution coming towards us. My point is, is that. It does. The insurance industry helps big time with real estate and any real estate agents or brokers listening today. If you already have a background uh, in this where you work for a big insurance company like I did, which some pe most people probably have, that it, you can utilize those skills in negotiating because I sat down with my sellers on the phone and said, explain them to, you know, what recently sold. And this is what the, the buyers are looking at. You know, I know you feel that like your house is worth more than or the list price. However, Buyers don't see it that way. And then coming to a, a reason and then working with the buyer's agent uh, to resolve this. So it's, it's, they, I'm very grateful for what they've given me in, in those skills in 20 years because it's making me a successful business owner in the real estate side because um, it helps you analyze and think about the most, basically, like Mike said, conflict resolution. There was a lot of conflict between last night and this morning. And I was like, my old progressive brain kicked in this morning and is like, wait a minute, I know how we can resolve this. I can figure out how to resolve this conflict. So, you know, then I'm sure you guys deal with that all the time in insurance as well. When if people make claims and why, why was my claim not being paid and things like that? Uh, absolutely. And you can actually see it uh, when you want to watch how a insurance company performs when it, in regards to claims. My tip and my secret is go to Morgan & Morgan and it's public right. information yep. and you can actually pull their verdicts like every year they come out with a report i believe it's the new one for 2019 if it hasn't already come out it should probably come out soon and it's a report and it lists in there all their verdicts which were pre-trial settlement offers post-trial you know verdicts and you know what actually the court awarded the uh, claimants and if you look in there uh, and especially look at companies like Progressive, there's like maybe a handful to maybe a dozen verdicts in there. And if you add those up, they don't even ac accumulate or total to 
a uh, the uh, total amount for one claim paid by some ins other ins large insurance companies where some of these companies probably have 200 verdicts with Morgan and Morgan and when you analyze it and you actually look at it and why progressive is so good and even Geico I mean even I mean uh, those two I know are kind of running head to head for you know who's taking over market share in the United States but when you look at why they are so profitable, why they are everywhere, uh, you know, on television and on the radio and everything you, you get in the mail these days, why they are so good is you look at that report and you go, they are handling claims. They are negotiating settlements for their insurance against other, you know, other claimants with other insurance companies, hands down better than anybody else in the industry. And, and I say, you know, again, going back, how do you get that information? Go to the attorneys, go look at Dan Newland's verdicts, go look at Mark Nation's verdicts, and you will see that they can negotiate and they are the masters at negotiating in this industry. Other companies, they will either deny the claim or, you know, pay out whatever the policy limits are. And, and you know, and like I said, at these two companies, like Progressive and Geico, they're just, I hate to say it, but they are better than anybody else. And I think it's a lesson that, you know, agents can take away, you know, consumers can take away, but other insurance companies as well. I agree. Um, one thing I wanted to, um, I know we're getting to the halfway point here. I was kind of thinking on the uh, way into the office this morning, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, a couple of topics we could discuss. One of the things I was thinking about, and I know you can relate to this, Nick, is I was thinking about Antonio and Haley and, you know, the difference uh, where they are at, at, you know, their age, you know, being, you know, a generation, but, you know, behind me and you, obviously, uh, and, you know, you know, the difference between them and us. And it was kind of, it was really fascinating to look at where they are at in life and the difference in how motivated and focused they are at this age in life. And I look back at myself and I kind of laugh and I go, you know, oh my God, Mike. And I mean, I, I'm a child of the nineties. You know, I really, you know, came of age, you know, graduated high school in the nineties and started school. And I'm looking at it and going like, it is astonishing to look at them and say, you know, they have this goal, they have a life plan. They have already started on the journey. Uh, you know, Antonio just, you know, bought a home and I'm going, oh my gosh, at that age, I was still trying to figure out, you know, you know, what, you know, live this bohemian lifestyle of, you know, what the hell am I going to do the next morning when I, when I wake up? And I mean, well, what's your, what's your take on that, Ned? Oh, my thing. Yeah. I, I was, I will say I, I graduated in, 1999 and uh so i'm a child of the 90s as well and we went to the movie theaters we didn't watch netflix we didn't watch uh, hulu or anything out there now we didn't have these we didn't have this mobile device like this it was a flip phone back then <laughs> and it did not have text capability or internet access or if it was internet access back in the 90s it was probably like 15 bucks a minute to use the internet on your phone when it wasn't a very friendly phone but yeah i i wonder that too because like it's funny that you say like you said living boy like bohemian because I was the type that I my father was still parents my father was still alive at the time when I, even when I was in my early twenties and the thing is that then I'm like okay I'll just take my time I'm working for you know, my early twenties I worked for Progressive for twenty years or, or started at like eighteen or nineteen years old or whatever it was and I'm like just doing whatever and no plan and then now it took me till i was almost right which next month i'll be 40. so it took me up this to 40 to realize that i wanted to start my own business and then when i was in my 20s i kind of like was goofing off and you know taking each day living life to the fullest taking each day uh, with a grain of salt and just hoping for the best and no big worries no big cares and now i'm like i agree with you on about you guys antonio and haley that in your generation you guys have a different, and I'm, I'm very proud of you and very awesome that you guys are doing what you're doing. Because when I was in your, at your age, I was not doing, thinking, I wasn't thinking of the future. I was just living by the seat of my pants every single day and say, oh, eventually I will settle down. And it took me till I was like 39 to do so. So, yep. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ab absolutely, absolutely. It's it's imp it's really impressive, and I, I look at them and go, oh, you know, oh my gosh. I mean, like you guys are going to be light years, uh, you know, beyond where I'm at. 
uh, you know, by the time, you know, you get, you know, to the age of, you know, your mid forties, you, you know, like me and that, you know, hopefully you're not having this, uh, you know, existential, you know, permanent midlife crisis, <laughs> you know, you get a 40, uh, but I, I'm sure everybody, you know, else gets that as well. But like, like I said, it's, it's just phenomenal. How do you guys feel about that? Antonio and Haley? Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're both very driven. I think that's what, um, I mean, we really just want to build something for the future. And I think we really chose insurance too, because I was reading an article not too long ago and it said that, um, most people will be retired by 2028. So over 50%. And then it also said that only 4% of our generation, the millennials, um, actually want to go into the insurance business. And I think, us stepping in to do this is a great thing too because all of our friends are growing up. I mean, they're going to start buying houses and cars, and somebody needs a reliable person our age to kind of relate with too um, to help them advise them through all of the things that they need to be protected in too. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think young people is definitely a big reason. And it's like insurance is one of those kind of like scary industries, I think, for younger people. I know most, yeah. pretty much all my friends don't understand it. And it's like, they're all going to be purchasing it, though, in the next couple of years, if not already. I mean, I just bought my first home, and I had to go through that home buying process. So I'm just really excited to advise those people and give them the correct coverages and explain it to them. So they're not just purchasing something that they have no idea about. And um, so that's like a big piece that I'm excited about. And then for the drip, for the drive, I think a big influence for me was my dad's owned his own business since he was like 20. And growing up, watching the pros and cons of that and the perks involved definitely kind of put a chip on my shoulder to always that's kind of where I knew I knew I wanted to be from a very young age so that definitely helped me find direction like yeah ex ex and you know I I can't really blame anybody for this and I and when I got into this industry I really had the same feeling I mean uh that it was you know like what you know what the what the heck is insurance I mean like the stereotype that I had in my mind was you know, this old guy sitting behind a wooden desk and, you know, with wood paneling on the walls with a cigar, you know, and, you know, and, you know, and this dude and he's pushing papers around. And, you know, he's using, you know, language, you know, policy language that I can't understand. And to a degree, I mean, yes, there's still a lot of that, like in the industry, unfortunately. And why I got in and why I stayed in was like, I was like, Dude, this is, God. I'm going to make my best effort to kind of change this and modernize it because it's the stereotype is wrong about this industry 100 percent and you know once you get into it you realize it more and the value of it too from you know a you know an occupation i mean we, we talk about it all the time and i say even for you know why it's important for you know realtors or lenders or people in title or whatnot you know especially in the residential you know real estate process or even if you're a builder to get develop partnerships with insurance and we understand, you know, as full disclaimer that, you know, during the transaction process, we understand we're the low man on the totem pole. I mean, we're, you know, below what an inspector does, um, you know, during that process. Uh, we, we always you know, say the realtors at the top, you know, the lenders here, the titles here. And, you know, we, you know, we're all the way down here as far as the transactional process. Our important role really doesn't come in during the transaction. We leave that to the realtors, the lender and everybody else, and, you know, and the home buyer and whatnot, where we come in and our value is post transaction because our average client uh, life cycle in our agency, you know, how long they stay with us is and we're trying to get it you know to an actual you know quote unquote lifetime but it's about 10 years on average and where we come in after that is cultivating and you know maintaining those relationships and the information on the insurance side that we are privy to it, we think is invaluable i mean we've actually built agencies out for lenders we've built agencies out for title title uh, broker insurance brokerages property managers and the reason we do it and when they come to us and ask us to do this they go what is the real value behind the insurance how much money can i make you know what you know what's the premiums what the commissions and we say tell them the real value is in the data and the information and the relationships on these clients that we are acquiring over the next 10 years for and you would not believe and haley can tell you this being in you know the business for a good number of years now that 
our clients will call us literally about everything, you know, but, you know, everything short of, you know, you know, which pills should I take in the medicine cabinet? But seriously, I mean, they, we know when they're getting divorced. We know when their kids are getting married. We know when they're moving out of state. You know, when Uncle Bob is moving into state, we're privy to those life changes. And we tell, you know, our partners that we've worked with in building and that, that that's opportunities for you, uh, you know, for different silos and different verticals to build out another business. So we do say that, you know, when, again, when we when we pitch or when we talk, we say that is really our value is in maintaining these relationships for, you know, decades to come. And we really do that on the insurance side. The only other place I can really think of that really does that would be uh, financial advisory services or, you know, accounting. I mean, uh, you know, you know, you know death and taxes is what they say. Well, you know, tax, people usually tend to go to this, get same CPA taxes every year, but even financial, you know, advisors, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, investing on them on their own and themselves right now, but the insurance, the agent there, that relationship will just maintain in perpetuity. Definitely. Well, that's awesome. And so we've, we've got like about five minutes. So is there anything else? Do you want me to, Mike? Do you want me to share with everybody the screen about the new service or new uh, line of coverage that you guys carry? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I'll preface it by saying that we we've always been a full licensed independent agency uh, going back, you know, for as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, from two thousand six. Uh, you know, in two thousand six, we really got out of the financial uh, services side of it in regards to, you know, investing in mutual funds and whatnot. We kind of got out of that and wanted to stick, you know, to PNC, but we've always sold life insurance and we did sell health insurance back then when the Affordable Health Care Act came out and kind of the industry was in chaos. We kind of got, got out of the health insurance game. Now, recently, and then it's by we you know, we started getting inquiries about health insurance and Medicare and everything else, you know, year after year after year. And, you know, we were, you know, referring the business out and we were looking at it and saying, you know, it's just like PNC almost like we feel it's a very underserviced, uh, you know, segment of the industry. So we sent out, uh, surveys to all our clients and said, is this something that you want to look into? Uh, why can't you do our, why can't you do my insurance, Haley? Why can't you do my insurance, Antonio and Mike and whatnot on the health insurance side? So we made a big leap this year and said, you know, buy popular demand, which is our clients and, you know, our, you know, prospective clients coming in, we're going to get back in the game. And we made an agreement with everybody here in the office and said, if we get back in the health insurance game, we're going to do it right. We're going to take everything that we do on the PNC side in regards to service and bring it over to the health insurance side. And uh, we have got a great team, a great back office team that is really supporting our initiatives here. And we're looking forward to it. So, I mean, it's, it's a big leap for us, um, well thought through. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to being able to offer this, you know, you know to the general consumer out there. Oh, that's awesome, guys. So we've got about three minutes left. Is there between Mike, Antonio, and Haley, uh, tip of the week or advice for the week for all our listeners and viewers today, a brief uh, statement about what you guys have to you know, contribute for those out there for motivation or inspiration? I'm going to leave that to Antonio and Haley, but I am going to say in regards to anywhere in Florida, but especially over there on the West Coast of Florida, these, these are your two for anything in regards to insurance. Awesome. Thank you. And I guess my tip would be for young people, especially, but anybody, if you don't really understand what insurances you have now, or you don't know a coverage on your policy, call your agent or call us or call somebody, just get educated on it. Don't be so afraid of uh, what you don't know. No, definitely. Knowledge is power. And honestly, um, a big tip too, for anybody, especially um, opening a business or just trying to, you know, get your feet running. Um, don't give up either. Just, Keep going, keep doing the right thing always. I mean, treat your customers, your clients right, and I think everything else falls into place. So yeah, awesome. and I mean, I mean, attack on you know just what, you know what the Haley said, and and it's kind of been one of our mottos in this business is. 
you never know who you are talking to. And I mean, uh, for example, I could have been talking to Antonio, uh, you know, three years ago when he was college, you know, calling me asking for a renter's insurance policy that, you know, it probably costs, you know, 150 bucks and maybe I'm making $2 on it. Hey, man, uh, you know, hopefully Antonio today is going to, you know, be the uh, CEO of an insurance company and hopefully he's still my client. So we've always kind of uh, leveled the playing field uh, in regards to, you know, our client sell and exactly what Haley said. We, you know, truly, Treat everybody walking through the door like they are a million dollar client. And I think that has been one of the keys to our success. I agree. Back of you, I was up on that. That's how I, I run my business too. I treat everybody, no matter the price range, I still treat everybody equally in terms of like if they're a million dollar client as well. Um, any other piece of advice to add to you guys' advice uh, out there to everybody listening today, especially what I'm going through with the um, with the buyer, my sellers to get this, that we're reaching a deal here hopefully soon for finalized uh, is communication. Open communication is key. And that is exactly why we were able to get to where we're at today. Because anybody listening out there that's in any industry at all, communicate with your buyer, seller, or your customers. Because if you have a chat with them, they will listen. And it's better than trying to ignore them and trying to make things happen without communicating. All right. you, need, you need to be the uh, Todd Miner of the uh, real estate world where you're like, everything I learned in Progressive in regards to claims and the negotiation process, nice. now I brought over to the real estate side. <laughs> well, it's funny that you said that because I just did a commercial reshoot of my uh, downtown expert commercial over in Spectrum Reach in Maitland last Friday, which if the commercial will, still, will be available probably Wednesday or Thursday once editing uh -huh. is done. Uh, but I actually did a, a walk-on billboard ad like Todd Miner does on Spectrum 13. That's and awesome. And they, they showed me the tape on the ground, and, and they said, I want to do my walk-on billboard just like Todd Miner. <laughs> and they're all like, you see that piece of tape on the floor right there? That's where Todd Miner stands to do these walk-on billboards ads. So that's funny that you brought that up because <laughs> that's, awesome. that's exactly what I was talking about on Friday at Spectrum. So if you're listening, Todd, we'd love to have you on the show sometime. <laughs> that's um, right? So, but all right. Well, that's awesome, guys. Well, I'm very grateful for having you guys on the show and, and getting to meet you, Antonio and Haley. Uh, stay safe out there in Port Charlotte. And uh, obviously, when I have my either buyers or sellers out there that need insurance over there on the West Coast, I'll let them know about you guys over there, too. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having well. me. So, thank you. All right. So, anyways, everybody, this has been Home to All, an all inclusive real estate podcast. You can reach me at 407 508 8809. 407 508 8809. This segment is brought to you by Blanchard Insurance uh, for all of your insurance need. Now offering uh, health and what do you say it was personal insurance? Oh, right? it's uh, yeah, it's individual health insurance. Individual uh, health insurance, which yeah. is awesome. Uh, especially now nowadays. And um, all right, guys. Well, you guys are great. This uh, You can get them at BlanchardInsurance.com uh, and check out their Facebook page, like their page, uh, comment on their post. Uh, you can also reach me at downtown.expert. Thanks again to Blanchard Insurance from downtown Orlando, Florida. Wishing you all great real estate health. Till next week, stay safe. Be kind to everyone around you. Again, Antonio Haley and Mike, you guys have a wonderful day out there in the insurance world. And I'll have a great day here in the insure, or the real estate world. So have a good day. All right. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Well. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Nicholas Acosta, the downtown expert realty in Orlando, Florida, and host of the podcast, Home to All, an all-inclusive real estate podcast. Check out his website, www downtown.expert or 407 508 8809 Facebook and Instagram at downtown.expert See you next time